We are on part number five, day number five this week, talking about uh, leading from inspiration instead of fear. And most of this week, we've been talking about David and Samuel and Saul. We've been in 1 Samuel. So today, we are going to talk about when Samuel went and anointed David to be king. So that's in chapter 16. Now, you know Saul, we talked about Saul. He wasn't a very good king. Um, and he was the first king of Israel. And David was actually the king that God wanted. So in 1 Samuel, Samuel 16, we're not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to point out a few things. Hey, thanks for joining. We're going to read a few things. So here they are. Um, four points. The first one is, why did God, thank you for the hearts, why did God anoint David more than 20 years before he actually became king? Have you ever thought of that? Like, why wouldn't God just wait to anoint David when it was time to be king? And the answer is obvious, because God loves the process. And one of my favorite pastors says, thank you for sharing. One of my favorite pastors says, from the promise to the palace is the process. You've got to go through the process. And here's one thing. We've been talking about leading from inspiration instead of fear, right? And what happens to us a lot of times is we get a calling or we get this idea in our minds or we want to pursue a goal or a dream or we face a challenge and we think if it does not work out right away, then it must not be meant to be. We get a calling, you know, we get a dream or a goal and we think, well, if things aren't working out for me in the first week, yeah, the first month, the first year, then maybe that's not for me. But that's not true of this story, right? Hey, Laura Lynn, thanks for joining. But that's not true of this story. David didn't even, he wasn't even looking to become king. So it's not even like it was a, a dream in his heart, right? God went and found him and yet, hi, and yet it took 20 plus years for him to become king. So just because it doesn't happen right away does not mean it's not your calling. You got to hold on to that. That's bigger than you think it is. So think about that. Number two is your calling is not dependent on your skill or abilities. Okay. That you need to, maybe you need to hear that again. Your calling is not dependent on your skill or abilities. Verse seven said, so Samuel goes there and he thinks, oh, is it the oldest son or is it the next oldest son or what? It was the youngest son. Verse seven says, the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height for I've rejected him, that other brother. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So you don't have to have the skill or ability in order to achieve the goal or the dream or pursue the calling, right? We're gonna find out later, you just need God. Number three is, the one God called was the one who was working. Okay, so think about this. He goes, Samuel goes, and he's looking at all the brothers, right? And he says, okay, it's not you, it's not you, it's not you, it's not you. He said, do you have any other sons? He's like, yeah, I've got one other son. Well, where's he at? He's in the field working. He's taking care of the sheep. Why weren't the other brothers working? I mean, that's what they did, right? They're, they're farmers. They're working with animals. Why was David the only one working with the animals? So, so God's going to come alongside the people who are working. So, and we got one more point, but I want to review these first three first because they all tie together. You've got a calling, you've got a goal, you've got a dream. Just because it doesn't happen right away doesn't mean you weren't called to it. There's a process from the promise to the palace is the process. You got to go through the process. If you skip the process and get to the palace too soon, you can't stay in the palace. Okay. Number two is it's not dependent on your skill or ability. So stop evaluating yourself and just pursue the dream. You will get better. And number three is, okay, you, you need to be out there working while you're in the process. You need to be out there active while you're in the process. And here's the hard part about that. If you're not succeeding while you're working, you'll want to give up and you'll point to the work. You'll say, look, I'm doing work and it's not working. So maybe I'm not called to this. No, you should just keep working. So here's the last point. It's found in verse 13. It's the last verse, I think, uh, of, well, of that section at least. And it says, and the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. And yet it took 20 plus years. Here's the other thing we do. We put God on a shelf when things don't start working out for us in what we're doing. We put God on the shelf and we start evaluating us and saying, okay, what am I doing wrong? And it's not bad to evaluate what you're doing wrong, but what we forget is that God's in control. So I'm gonna end with a story. Uh, we just bought a house not long ago. Somebody asked where I am. Highlands, North Carolina, up on a mountain in North Carolina. We uh, bought a house not long ago. 
Uh, you know the seasons are changing, the leaves have started falling, and there are leaves everywhere. We have trees all around our house, so many leaves. So I went out and, and bought a, uh, a leaf blower. I, I bought a blower, right? And um, before the blower, <laughs> I was using a broom on the leaves. We didn't even have a rake, okay? I'm telling you what, if you use a broom on the leaves, you can get the job done, but it'll take a lot longer. Just like the children of Israel when they left Egypt, right? They could have gotten across the desert in 40 days, but it took them 40 years because they put God on the shelf, right? So on this last point, I just want to tell you as you're leading from inspiration instead of fear, as you're overcoming challenges, as you're pursuing the things that God has called you to, in addition to those first three points, this last one's really important. You cannot put God on a shelf. If you want to achieve the things you want to achieve and you want your, your team to achieve the things you want them to achieve, get on your knees as well. Invite God in number one. Right? That's like me deciding that I bought a blower, but I'm going to still use the broom. Okay, That's just stupid. <laughs> That's just stupid. Use the blower. Right? Ask God to be a participant in it. He's called you to it. He's the only one who can do it. And don't only believe that for yourself. We talked about earlier this week, who are you watching and who's watching you? Well, I hope whoever's watching you sees that you're on your knees right, and that you're inviting God in because they will do the same and things will totally change about your situation in God's time in the right time. Thank you everybody for the hearts and for sharing and for joining. Uh, we'll see you next week when we're talking about dreams and we're talking about uh, the story of Joseph. All right, bye guys. <laughs>